In this demo video, we're going to show how Defense Pro's Behavioral Burst Attack Protection works. Burst attacks, also known as hit-and-run DDoS, use repeated short bursts of high-volume attacks at random intervals. Each short burst can last only a few seconds, while a burst attack campaign can span hours or even days. These attacks unleash hundreds of gigabits per second of throughput towards its target. This demo has three parts. First, we will review the configuration of the behavioral burst attack protection and the lab testing environment. Second, we will start the attack campaign by generating few burst hits and see how Defense Pro blocks them. Finally, we will continue the attack campaign and see how Defense Pro detects a burst attack following a sequence of several burst hits. In this part, we will see how Defense Pro Burst Attack Protection is configured as an extension to Defense Pro's Behavioral DOS, BDOS, protection. We will also see the attack simulation tool used in this demo. In this screen, we see Defense Pro's BDOS Profiles screen. If we double-click a BDOS profile and then the Burst Attack Protection tab, we see the configuration of this feature. The checkbox Enable Burst Attack Protection is used to enable or disable this feature for the selected profile. It allows controlling the activation of this feature per policy. The second parameter, Maximum Interval Between Bursts, determines the interval between bursts for an attack to be considered as a burst attack. By default, a continuous stream of bursts will be identified as a burst attack if the interval between each of them is smaller than 10 minutes. The user can change this value. For this demo clip, we used Spirant Test Center as the testing device. We use it to generate legitimate and attack traffic. There are three parts to this screen. In the middle, there is the traffic flow window that shows two generated streams, the ones whose checkbox is marked. The first stream, called BDOS underscore one, open square bracket, sin underscore attack, close square bracket, is an attack flood of TCP SYNAC packets. This will be the attack traffic simulating the burst attack. It is set to 40% of the interface speed, in this case, 400 megabits per second of traffic. The second stream, called BDOS underscore legit, represents legitimate traffic at a rate of 1,000 frames per second. We want to see in this demo that the legitimate traffic isn't affected by a burst attack while Defense Pro mitigates it. On the top right window, we see the command sequencer. We're going to generate both streams, attack and legit, for 30 seconds, followed by an idle time of 40 seconds, and repeat this sequence three times in this demo. These three reoccurring bursts represent a burst attack. We will see how Defense Pro detects and blocks it. In the left-hand bottom side, there is the port traffic and counters window, which shows the transmitted traffic, total TX rate, and the received traffic, total RX rate. We will use this screen to demonstrate the effectiveness of the burst attack mitigation as well as the influence of mitigation on legitimate traffic. Now let's go ahead and start a burst attack campaign. We will generate few burst hits and see how Defense Pro detects and blocks them. We will see that Defense Pro treats the first couple of burst hits as two distinct BDOS attacks and that it detects a burst attack starting with the third burst hit. More on that later. Let's start by generating the first burst hit alongside to legitimate traffic. When we click play on the command sequencer, we see a total of 596,238 frames per second transmitted and received. We notice that Defense Pro doesn't yet block the attack as all transmitted traffic is received. This is because it takes up to 10 seconds for Defense Pro to create an initial signature to start attack mitigation followed by an additional 8 seconds needed to fully optimize the signature. Here in Vision, we can see that Defense Pro detects a BDOS attack. We see the attack details matching the generated attack traffic, Network Flood IPv4 TCP SYNAC. Double-clicking the attack, we can view the attack characteristics and various other information. Important to notice the Attack Info tab that shows the state of the attack. Footprint applied means a BDOS signature is applied to mitigate the attack. Recall that this is the first burst hit and Defense Pro treats it as a plain BDOS attack. We will see later on what happens to this field when a burst attack is detected. 
we now see also the footprint itself and the various fields used for the signature. The burst attack tab doesn't show anything, as it is a regular BDOS attack, not yet categorized as a burst attack. We will see later that once the attack hits Defense Pro three times, Defense Pro will declare a burst attack, block future bursts instantly, and present relevant statistics and information related to it. Let's go back to the Spirant Test Center. We now see in the command sequencer that we are in an idle time for 23 seconds out of 40. We can verify that by noticing in the Port Traffic and Counters window that no traffic is transmitted or received. If we go back to Vision, we see the attack is terminated. This means Defense Pro noticed that the attack ended and terminated it. Now let's wait a few more seconds until the idle interval ends. Now we see the second burst hit comes in, alongside to legitimate traffic. We see that the total RX rate is 1000 frames per second. This represents the legitimate traffic that is not blocked by Defense Pro. On the other hand, the attack traffic is immediately blocked. The reason is that when burst protection is enabled, as we saw in the initial configuration screen, Defense Pro caches the relevant information, including the applied signature, for use in the next burst hits. When we go to the current attacks table, we see a new attack started. The first line represents the second burst hit. The second line is the first burst hit that is still showing in the table, but is terminated already. We see that the attack characteristics are the same as the first burst. The footprint is the same as well, and there are no burst attack statistics, which means Defense Pro didn't yet declare a burst attack. We now move again to the idle interval, and we see TX and RX rates are zero. In this part, we will see what happens when the third burst hit comes in, which triggers a burst attack detection. We will also see how Defense Pro blocks it. Defense Pro waits to see three consecutive bursts to declare a burst attack. This value is configurable in case higher or lower sensitivity is preferred. We see the third burst comes in, followed by an immediate blocking of attack traffic and forwarding of the thousand frames per second of the legitimate traffic. This third burst hit triggers a burst attack. When three consecutive bursts come in, a burst attack is detected and Defense Pro uses the previously developed signature to block future occurrences of burst hits. Defense Pro waits for 10 minutes, by default, to see that no additional bursts occur before it terminates the burst attack. Until then, the signature keeps blocking the next bursts, and Defense Pro keeps the attacks open. We now see the last few seconds of the third burst elapse, and now, we are in idle interval again. Let's now click Stop Sequencer Execution to stop the Spirant Test Center from transmitting any traffic. And we set a timer of 5 minutes of idle time. During these five minutes, we will not transmit any traffic. Fast forwarding to 56 seconds left, let's see what is the status of Defense Pro. We see in the current attack table a new line of behavioral DOS attack with status ongoing, which means there is an ongoing attack, although there is no traffic sent for more than four minutes already. Double clicking the attack for more details, we see the attack characteristics are the same as previous burst hits. However, since this is the third burst hit, Defense Pro declares it as a burst attack. And now we see in the Info tab that the state is burst attack blocking. This means we are in a burst attack, and although there are four minutes of idle time, the attack is still open and the signature is applied. We can see the same footprint. And now we can also see the burst attack statistics tab shows relevant information such as indication whether there is an active burst hit right now, the first line, which is obviously no, and various other useful statistics. If we look back at the timer, we can see there are 14 seconds of idle time remaining. Let's run the traffic again by clicking play button and see what happens. We see the attacking traffic is immediately blocked and only 1,000 frames per second of legitimate traffic are allowed, since the burst attack is open and the signature is in place to block the offending traffic. In this demo, we demonstrated how Defense Pro's behavioral burst attack protection can detect and automatically mitigate burst attacks. 
by leveraging a unique, industry-first behavioral-based protection for burst attacks, DefensePro can protect against very short-lived bursts and adapt to changing burst attack vectors. For more details, please read our blog or visit radware.com. Thank you for watching this video.